Welcome back. My name is Greg Martin. Today we're talking about ggplot once again. It's a package within R. It's an amazing package when it comes to data visualization. I think without question, it is the best package that's out there on any platform, right? We're talking specifically about using colors, how you can really take control over the colors that gets used in your plot. You can define them specifically. You can tap into existing palettes. You can make sure that the colors you use are colorblind friendly. And there's a lot you can do with colors and it's not that complicated. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video. Let's do this, giddy up. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Just to let you know, everything that is taught in this video is available as a PDF. There'll be a card at the end of the video that you can click on. Click on the card, download this PDF that you can see here. It's got all the code that I'm using and the outputs at the end of the PDF. There is also some QR codes that you can scan in with your phone and rewatch. For example, you can rewatch this video by scanning in that code. We've got other videos that you can watch. You can click on the links as well. They're hyperlinks and there's some courses that you could do at Learn More 365 if you're interested. How is it that I've got a QR code that'll take you to a video that clearly hasn't been posted yet? Is it magic? Is this an example of time travel? What are your thoughts? Put your comments in the comment section below. Let's get into this video. Booyah shaka. Just to the top of this Quarto file over here, this is the text that you'll get in the, in the PDF, by the way. First of all, let me just introduce you to R Color Brewer, right? Install packages, R Color Brewer, call it using the library command function, R Color Brewer. This gives you a set of palettes that you can tap into. So while in R, yes, you can define colors specifically yourself, and I, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. It's also true, and often, best practice just to use predefined palettes which we know include colors that work well together. And even within the palettes that exist within our color brewer, if you use this function here, display brewer all colorblind friendly equals true, you can see which palettes on the, on the left hand side here, these are the different palettes that you can use. And I'm gonna show you how to use these palettes. These are the ones that we know are colorblind friendly and a huge portion of the population have are colorblind to an extent. So you wanna try and make sure that your plot works for anybody looking at it. This is really good advice. How these palettes work, I mean, you've got some, if you look at sort of set two, it's kind of got reasonably pastel colors across a range of colors. But then if you've got, you know, this top one, uh, Y-I-O-R, R, D, it's giving you a range between two colors, uh, you know, dark red and yellow. You would use different palettes under different circumstances for different sort of visualization requirements, but it's a nice, it's a really nice place to start. Okay, how do you use these palettes? Let's quickly have a look. He has a pretty standard equipment. Uh, miles per gallon, by the way, is a lovely data set. I only use data sets that you have access to, so you can re replicate the coding that I do and practice this at home. MPG, miles per gallon, lovely data set to practice with. Here we've got a ggplot, just a very simple, uh, you know, it's, it's displacement, which is the size of the engine versus fuel efficiency on the highway. And we're disaggregating by three, by four wheel, front wheel and rear wheel drives. So our color aesthetic is mapped against the drive variable. And R will automatically assign colors to each of these, each of the components of the factor. But, my experience is the colors that R assigns is very often not uh, off a palette that you would want. And so you want to define the palette. You want it to be consistent with the style that you want. So after you've done your GM jitter in this case, this is your geometry, put a plus. Scale color brewer is the function. Palette equals set two, and it will use that particular palette to uh, assign colors to the various aesthetics, assign the color aesthetic to the components of the of the variable that you're looking at. Simple, super duper easy. Now, quick note, we've said scale color brewer because the aesthetic here is color equals drive. If this was fill, so for some plots, like for example, if we were doing a bar plot, we wouldn't be saying color equals, but we'd be saying fill equals and then the variable, then we would say scale fill brewer palette equals set to. Right, so keep that in mind, but otherwise very easy to use and the output is lovely. Okay, let's keep going. You can take more control. So in this code over here, you can see I've specified the color. I've said I want this plot to be steel blue. I, it's kind of quite a nice color. Steel blue really works. I think it's a beautiful color and you just put it in there and you've defined the color. Fair enough, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's keep going. 
we might be mapping color against a, a particular variable. And again, color equals drive. This is the same example. We've got uh, this MPG data set. We're saying color equals drive. But instead of using the color brewer, we might want to actually specify for each of these components of the factor what color each of them will be. And that's what I've done right here. I've said scale color manual. So we're saying we're going to manually specify the colors. Values equals concatenation. And inside the concatenation, you know, we've got the, the different uh, values. Four equals so four wheel drives equals dark blue. Front wheel drives equals dark red. Rear wheel drives equals dark green. And of course, voila, booyashaka. Of course, it does exactly that as it says on the tin. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The next thing I want to show you is that we've used words here, dark blue, dark red, dark green, to define the colors. But what if you really wanted to be specific? You wanted to define exactly what that color would look like, which, by the way, is often the case. You often want plots to adopt the branding of your, you know, your company or whatever it is that you work, you know, whatever organization you're working for. So you want to specify colors exactly, right? We can use hex code, right? So here I've got the exact same code color scale, scale color manual values. And for each of the variable variables, I've got a hex code that defines exactly what the colors will be. Now, how do we find those hex codes, right? I mean, like how, do I, how did I know what to put in there? Also super duper easy. There's web pages you can go to. And here's one, just do a, a Google search for hex codes. And it's gonna, there's millions of these kinds of web pages, but this is an example of one. You just choose the exact color you want. And at the top over here, you just cut and paste that code. That, and that's the hex code. And you can stick that into your plot. Okay, super duper easy. I hope you found that useful. There will be a card at the top of the video right now, on the screen right now. Click on that card. You will be able to download this PDF and uh, you'll find it useful. I hope you found this video useful. Stay and watch another video. Make comments below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't before, etc., etc. So on and so forth. Hope you're doing well. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.